Hi, I'm Zach Alardo, and welcome to Fixie Talks. Today's guest is Michael Shrewsbury from the hit channel Locked In. Today we're going to ask Michael a few questions to see what exactly it is about bikes that brings us together. Oh yeah, the hot seat. So how'd you get into bikes? It's actually a funny story. I was really bored and I was at home, I was living with my parents at the time, and I went into the shed and I found my dad's old, like, late 80s Raleigh lugged road bike. End up being like a 63 centimeter <laughs> frame, and I'm all of like 5'11". I aired it up and it held air. He didn't have normal pedals for it, so I just slapped on his Shimano clip-in shoes and just said, well, I know kind of how these work. Went out riding, had the seat like all the way into the frame, could barely touch the bars, rode it around. I was like, this is kind of cool. Until I went to a light, stopped, unclipped, and I pushed myself up and then kept going <laughs> to the other side <laughs> till I fell and hit the ground. <laughs> and then I got honked at and the guy was mad that I fell over. I'm like, hang on, man, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying. And so I asked my dad, I was like, is this bike the right size for you? He goes, I don't know. <laughs> He's like, I'm pretty sure it's too big. And it totally was for how big he was. And so that got me into like, kind of like this, riding around was kind of fun, but I needed something my size. One of my relatives was really into cycling. So I reached out and said that I was looking for a bike. He, unlike your story, was get an older, kind of tried and true bike. It'll be a lot better than a really basic modern road bike. Mm -hmm. So I had something with down tube shifters on it. And then that turned into me seeing the Macaframa videos and all that kind of stuff. And that got me into riding fixed for a long time. I still rode my road bike for like really long distance stuff, but I rode my fixed gear 95% of the time. And then it did all snowball from there. I've probably owned 50 bikes. And then I got in the road and then cycled across. And so it's just kind of snowballed to where all of my friends are like, oh yeah, that's the bike guy. So you became the bike guy. How did you become the bike guy for the internet? Basically, I started, I want to say it was 2010. Back then, YouTube was a totally different thing. It was still a lot of guys, cycling-wise, some dude in his garage with his DV cam, they had one shot, one angle, and he just talked for 25 minutes on how to put your pedals on. I couldn't afford to take stuff to the bike shop every single time you need something fixed, and so I wanted to learn the basics. That was really what drew me to start looking into YouTube. I mean, think about it now, everybody says, oh, I'll just YouTube it. It's That's what it is now because it's such a resource. Or back then, it was really long, drawn out videos that realistically there's a minute of worthwhile content in this guy's video. Why can't I do this? One of my top rated videos is how to paint your bike and it did relatively well within the first like month. I think I might have had a couple thousand views and back then that was somewhat substantial. And I really just wanted to tailor to people's attention span and the lack thereof and consolidate all my content into the shortest amount of time possible to get the maximum amount of info out. What's your favorite bike out of Ooh. the 50? <laughs> oh god, that's a good one. Favorite track bike, because that's what your people that's like. Yeah, that's what we all uh, want to know. <laughs> was my BMC track machine. That thing was a rocket ship. It beat you to hell, but it was a, it was a great bike build that I ended up doing with it. I got a lot of flack for it because I ran a brake. Uh, I had torn a ligament in my knee at that time, so I had to. It was carbon wheels, omniums, carbon cockpit, had multiple bar setups for it. And I rode that thing like a road bike. But that was definitely something that was like the pinnacle. Like I had come from eighth inch scrambler. Oh boy. And I was like, well, this is as good as it's probably gonna get yeah. without going like full track spec. <laughs> the second, which a lot of people are gonna argue with, would be my Canadale track that I had. I loved that thing. I built it really nice. Full Dura Ace, minus like the seat post. It was a beautiful bike, but it ended up being like a size smaller than I should have ridden. So I rode it because it's Canada track and you have to, <laughs> but the toe overlap was like atrocious and it being that small, like it was just really hard to like be comfortable on it. I had that and the BMC at the same time. Oof, so I was just like tough. dripping fixie goals <laughs> all over the place. Fix gear is where you came from. What is the future of your cycling and your channel. I think it's definitely molded into other genres. I'm somebody who's grown as a cyclist. Like I said, I rode predominantly fixed gear, single speed. I had a road bike, but I didn't use it as much. And I've owned, reviewed, you know, built a lot of different things. And I think that my channel, at least from my growth, like where it started, it has kind of followed that progression. Where now, I like not having as many limits, I think is where my cycling's at. Mm. 
Well, that's been Michael from Locked In, and it looks like he still has that fixed gear spirit in him, even though he might not always be riding on a fixed gear. So, if you are actually looking for more of that kind of content from my channel, you're not going to find it here. You're going to find it at Locked In, and you can find that link in the description. And Fixie Famous shoutouts to Mikey Sincox, Albert Wu, Marek Dravecki, Robert Terpstra, Blue Tick Hounds, Dorella01, Evil Ernie, Mark Vandeventer, and Jazeel for making these videos possible through their support on Patreon. Stop watching me if you haven't ridden your bike yet. Instead, ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.